So this is a joint work with uh, Gideon Rappaport and myself. Um, we've been working on this for about a year now. Um, and Gil gave a talk uh, earlier this year at the European LLVM conference. Um, so just to figure out um, who uh, among us uh, has not been to the Euro LLVM and has not heard Gil's talk. Okay, so I'll just give uh, a brief motivation of uh, why we're doing this uh, and what is vPlan. So we want to improve the vectorizers in, in LLVM, right? We want to, Zimon Moll earlier today talked about the fact that the loop vectorizer is not able to vectorize outer loops, only innermost loops. We know that and, and we want to change that. Um, but if we look, and we looked like a year ago at how the loop vectorizer is built, it makes a lot of decisions. It can vectorize a lot of uh, constructs. It does if conversion. Um, and produces a performant code, uh, but it does that by essentially recording a bunch of decisions uh, during the process of, of vectorization, and then when it decides to vectorize a loop, it goes and, and spits everything out. So essentially, if you want to improve the vectorizer, what you do is you want to teach it a new trick, you have to essentially record another decision along with all the other decisions. And each such decision is recorded in a map, and you just add another map. So you reach a point where you need a map just to navigate among all the maps. Um, and this is becoming very complicated, um, so we figured this is not very scalable. Uh, and we, we, in order to improve the capabilities of the vectorizer going forward, we really want to first refactor and improve the infrastructure of the vectorizer to, uh, to reach uh, a model where it would be much easier to go ahead and improve its capabilities. So the effort of, of vPlan uh, as such is, is a refactoring effort, right? We're not going to present to you performance improvements. Uh, we are trying very hard to retain all the existing capabilities of the loop vectorizer. And uh, frankly, it's, it's been hard enough. Um, and there, are, there, there have been um, bugs that uh, have been open and we're grateful for the community's support, uh, both in upstreaming this effort and in reporting issues along the way. Okay, so we're, we'll be talking about um, this infrastructure uh, modification that we've been doing, uh, where we're at currently, and the next steps. Gil talked about it uh, half a year ago in URL LVM, but there's been a lot of changes since then, which we'd, be, which we'd like to, to share with you. Okay, so the current step that we're at um, is actually that you know, the first step of vPlan is committed. So the current loop vectorizer uses uh, the first uh, version of vPlan, if you like, and uh, what it does is record all the decisions that the loop vectorizer is doing um, in, in this model, in vPlan, and then goes ahead and generates vectorized code from that uh, model driven by that model. So this is what we currently have, but there's a lot more that needs to be done um, to improve the, the infrastructure going forward. Um, so essentially we want to shift the whole process of vectorizing to use vPlan. So not only record the, the decisions in vPlan, um, but also refine the model, uh, model masking, uh, model instructions, we'll talk about that. Um, and also carry out the decisions using vPlan. Um, and, and we'll show you what decisions we're talking about and what does it mean to carry them out using vPlan. And furthermore, we want to use vPlan also in order to run analysis and check what options we have to improve uh, the vectorization process um, going forward um, using cost-based analysis. So these are the main takeaways. It's also roughly the agenda of the talk um, and hopefully it'll clear up uh, as we go along. So what is vPlan? Uh, we have a lot of new slides to, to show you. This is, is not one of them. This is the original vision of uh, vPlan that Gil presented uh, back in March. Um, and this is the way we envision vPlan to be the model for vectorizing. So there's a legality step that checks whether it's legal to go ahead and vectorize a loop. 
And if not, then we bail out early. Um, and if, if it is legal and we, we can vectorize, then we go ahead and model what the vectorized loop may look like um, as, as a first initial uh, plan, and then run uh, several decisions, several, several decisions that may be legal uh, based or maybe cost based in order to refine um, the plan and to optimize it, uh, and doing so without changing the underlying IR at all, okay? Um, and finally, once uh, we reach uh, the best candidate, and there may be several candidates uh, that are optional to us, once we reach the best one, go ahead and execute it and generate the vectorized code. And in doing so, uh, the uh, intention is that the vectorized code that we want to execute is going to be fairly straightforward. Once we have a plan that explicitly explains what the vectorized code should look like, should we decide to vectorize, then generating the code should be straightforward. Um, and in addition, reasoning about the cost, the potential uh, benefits of vectorizing compared to keeping the loop scalar or uh, choosing any alternative plan, measuring these costs should also be fairly straightforward once the plan depicts the actual vectorized code that we intend to generate. So that's the idea of, of the plan um, that was set forward. And what I want to first uh, touch, touch base on is, okay, what's the current state of, uh, of doing this? And um, we're essentially moving from the right side on towards the left, okay, in order to materialize this, this vision. And the current state we are at is uh, depicted in, in, this, uh, in this diagram. Um, and this is currently what the uh, LLVM's uh, top of tree uh, loop vectorizer is doing today. So the legality uh, stage uh, remains uh, untouched. Um, it goes through several considerations and records its decisions in these various maps. The cost model has also remained untouched from what it was without, uh, without vplan, going ahead and recording various decisions that are based on cost analysis. And these decisions could be different for different vectorization factors, different VFs. And then once um, we pass the legality, we start to run a planning step, okay? We take the decisions um, that have been computed ahead of time and we record them in a plan or in several plans. Uh, and that's how we can reason about how the vectorized code would look like should we decide to vectorize. And then we select the best one, again, according to the cost model. Um, and then the vectorized code is being generated by uh, executing this best B plan that we filter out from among the various candidates. Um, and there's, uh, there's two things uh, to, to add here. First, this execution step is not very straightforward like we would like it to be. There are still a lot of decisions that actually do take place once you decide to execute the best V plan. Um, the, the V plan doesn't depict all the decisions uh, at, at the fine granularity. And furthermore, there's another um, decision that actually takes place after we generate the vectorized code. We go ahead and, and, and optimize it. Uh, and this is an optimization that uh, uh, syncs scalar operands. That was the way it worked before, and that is still the way uh, it's working now uh, outside of the vplan model. Okay, so this is the high-level view of how vplan is used in order to vectorize a loop. Um, and to dive a little deeper, uh, what does a vplan actually look like? So j just to, before I forget, just to, to remind you, the cost is also something that should be uh, computed based on a vplan, and it is not computed uh, there yet, okay? So this is the first step we were able to, um, to commit. Um, and the whole idea is to introduce vplan um, in, in a staged approach. This is the first stage, okay? It will take time to to fulfill this, this prophecy. 
Okay, so just to, to note, decisions are taken up front, legality cost model. They're also taken place during execute. Some of the things are not visible in the replan, and they also take place as a post pass after we vectorize the code. Okay, so what does a vplan actually look like? Um, so you, you have a, a loop on the top left corner that's iterating um, and executing this statement um, conditional on, on A of I being greater than 777. And this, uh, this statement has a divide. Um, and currently, um, if you have a conditional divide, we cannot uh, vectorize it as such. We have no masked vector division representation in all of the MIR. Um, so we have to go ahead and generate scalar division instructions, each one of them guarded by this, this branch. Okay, so this is the IR going into the vectorizer. Uh, what does the vectorizer do with such, with such a loop? So this is what the vplan currently looks like if, um, if you uh, run uh, the loop vectorizer with dash debug. What you see on the right side is the vplan model uh, materialized based on this loop. So you see here basically the basic blocks um, and the, inside the basic blocks you see what we call recipes, uh, which essentially model the instructions that will be generated should we decide to, to vectorize the loop. You see the divide instruction appears here under a branch. So you mo we model all the control flow explicitly in the model. You can reason about what uh, code is under a branch, uh, where the branch resides in. Um, and um, this, this if-then structure is enclosed in a region. Uh, and this region is actually going to be replicated. Okay, how many divisions will we have? We will have a divide instruction for every SIMD lane, and there are VF lanes in a vector. And furthermore, the loop vectorizer can also unroll the loop for you uh, if it vectorizes or even if it does not vectorize. And you, so you'll have UF or unroll factor many parts. So essentially, we know that we will end up generating VF times UF instances of this if divide construct. Okay, so the vplan can model uh, this candidate, and it does so by compressing all these candidates together, and this vplan holds for different VFs and arbitrary UF in one, in one model. Okay, so we, we see how the divide uh, is represented. What about the other instructions? Um, so um, the, the phi is represented here as a widened induction recipe that is in charge of generating the vectorization code out of this phi, it can be a, a, wide, vec, a wide vector phi, it can add uh, scalar uh, steps to it. Um, the get element PTR is, is simply cloned. Uh, the load uh, of a, a of i and the compare are widened, so you will end up having a vector, uh, a vector load and a vector compare. Um, and at the end, you can see the subtract and the store appear here at the bottom as vector instructions, okay? So it seems pretty straightforward. The instructions map themselves onto the vplan, sort of in place. Uh, well, not quite. Uh, the loop vectorizer actually may need to move instructions around, and it's important to, to, to note that, and, and we'll see cases why, uh, why that needs to take place. Um, but essentially, what we're seeing here in, in vplan currently is an explicit modeling of the control flow, but all the internals of the recipes of these representations inside the basic blocks of a vplan are actually not the vectorized instruction you will see. They are the original IR instructions that the recipe just stores in order to be able to generate the vectorized code at the end. Uh, what the vplan actually currently shows you are only these sets of recipes uh, without telling you anything about their, what the instructions will eventually be produced. So there is this recipe uh, class uh, that is used in order to represent the internals of each basic block, 
and its only interface is if you wanted to generate vector code, you hit execute and it will generate the IR. Okay, but it does not provide you an interface of what that IR will look like uh, during the planning of the vectorization process. So we have about a handful of, of such recipes for doing the widening, for doing the uh, fee, uh, for doing replication. And that's how we take the, all the logic that the loop vectorizer is currently uh, using in order to represent all the different uh, vectorized code that it knows how to generate. So a recipe model is a sequence of instructions to appear. Uh, it doesn't tell you what they are, but it, it, it models them uh, opaque. Uh, and it uses these ingredients, which are the original IR instructions that, that we saw earlier, okay? Um, uh, one thing to note is that we have the control flow explicit here, but the uh, data flow or the instructions themselves that we've generated are not modeled in, in vplan yet, okay? Um, and one final thing to, to notice also is that, um, as Michal mentioned in the previous talk, the loop vectorized does if conversion, right? So we have here a store into A of I, which is under a condition, um, and that store appears here at the bottom in this basic block, uh, but it has to be masked, right? We're gonna generate a vectorized compare, and that we better not store elements that, uh, which fail this, this comparison, okay? You do not see that yet in this vplan. Um, so we actually don't model masks here at all. So going forward, we want to model masking, and we want to model uh, instructions, uh, which are not modeled currently in top of trunk. So we sent out the patch for the next step. So it's up on, uh, in review in the past couple of weeks. And this is uh, what the, the vplan looks like in the next step that, that is, is up for review. So we have the same, the same loop, um, and what we see here is the same compare that is going to be widened, but we also note that it is going to generate a mask, okay? And if we have a load uh, of uh, 100i, and that load is going to be masked, then we also note that the mask appears on the to be widened load. So essentially, uh, you can take a load and widen it without a mask, and you'll get an IR load with a vector type. And you can take a load and widen it with a mask, and essentially you'll get a call to a masked load intrinsic, which has a mask operand. And what mask operand is it? Well, we want to model it in vplan, and this is how we model it. We note which compare will produce the mask, and the load is going to consume the mask. And we have this def use relation, which we want to model inside vplan uh, in, this, in this current patch. The branch that guards the divide has to jump on a bit. That bit is actually extracted from the same mask. Um, so we have this diffuse of the compare generating the mask feeding the branch that will branch on top of it. And we noted earlier the store that must be masked according to the same compare. So in order to model masking, which is a, a vital part of the vectorization process, we want to introduce these uh, definitions and uses of masks. They did not appear in, in, the, uh, in the original uh, scalar IR. And in order to do that, we introduce two new classes, uh, one that represents the def, or a VP value, which has users. So in this case, this is a, this is a VP value. Um, and VP users, which have operands, uh, in order to denote the, the mask operand on loads, stores, and, and these branches. Okay, so that's how we can model uh, masking in vplan with their diffuse relations. And again, this is, this is the patch that's up, up for review. A more interesting example of masking is when we have nested conditionals. We check not only if A of I is greater than 777, and if so, go ahead and store into C of I, which formulates this uh, def, def feeding this use in a masked store, but we also have a compare of with 888, 
And then, in order to decide what mask should appear on the store into A of I, what we need to do is to combine the two compares together. How do we do that? We do that with an AND instruction that uses these two compares and feeds the masked store at the bottom. Okay, so an important thing to note here is that this AND instruction is brand new. There is no green counterpart. There is no ingredient. There is nothing in the original IR that we can relate to. It's, it's a product of the vectorization process, and it is used in order to generate and manipulate masks. Okay? And it is eventually going to be an instruction that the vectorizer will generate inside the loop body. Any instruction that is generated inside the loop body is going to be generated by a recipe. So this instruction needs a recipe in order to generate itself. But it also has defs and uses consuming masks and producing masks, so it also plays in the value and user hierarchy. So it is a user, right? So in order to model this AND, we introduce a VP instruction, which is both a recipe. You can execute it. It, it will generate this instruction. It's a, it's a recipe that generates a single instruction, but it's a recipe nonetheless. Uh, and it's also a user which has operands and has devs. So by representing these VP instructions, we can model instruction level uh, in, in vplan uh, for the purpose of masking in this patch, but for the purpose of, mask of representing and modeling other def uses within the loop uh, body uh, going forward. Okay, so this is the, the next step that's currently uh, under review and hopefully uh, will make its way um, into trunk. But we want to do more than that, okay? We want not only to record the masking decisions and all the other decisions that, uh, that the vectorizer takes, we also want to use vplan in order to carry them out. Uh, in order to explain what, what that means, we'll go through a couple of decisions and, and show why it's important to, take them, to carry them out using vplan uh, um, and what does it mean. So one such decision is to optimize two loads uh, together, uh, a load of uh, the, uh, the even elements of an array and the odd elements of an array. Um, if, you know, if you look at the IR that is being fed to the vectorizer, you see these two loads uh, that are, one is multiplied by three and then they're added and stored. And um, the loop vectorizer can already go ahead and optimize this. So it can essentially widen each of these loads into a stride to gather. And that's a per perfectly uh, legitimate um, solution, but it's not terribly efficient. A, a more efficient uh, solution is to combine the two loads together uh, in what is called an interleave group and essentially generate one load for both even and odd elements of double uh, width and then have two shuffle vectors to extract the odd elements and the even elements. So this is a decision that the loop vectorizer can take. It's a cost-based decision, uh, reasoning about the relative uh, improvement that this can bring relative to having a pair of gathers. Um, and this decision entails actually moving the loads together to one place where this combined load will eventually be generated. So this recipe will appear inside the basic block representing that. And one thing to note is that effectively, we're hoisting the second load to appear next to the first one. And the way the loop vectorizer is actually modeling is this is uh, by actually uh, uh, forgetting about the second load and only keeping the first load with the information of, of the interleave group uh, together along with it. So this is one decision that the vectorizer is taking. Um, and another decision um, that the vectorizer must take, this is not a cost-based decision, this is a legal-based decision, is a decision to move a cast instruction. So if you, take, uh, if you take the simple loop that's multiplying a pair of adjacent elements of an array together, um, and you run it through LLVM, then LLVM will optimize it on the way to the vectorizer uh, in such a way that the body will have only one load instruction inside. Uh, why is that? That's because the second load was already loaded in the previous iteration, right? It's a pair of adjacent loads. So the other load, so the percent one is actually feeding a fee, and percent zero is the load of the previous iteration. 
And we can sign extend both of them because we're loading shorts and writing into an int. Uh, so we have these two uh, casts, one for zero and one for one, and then we multiply them together and store. Okay, so if we have a load feeding the next iteration, we have a cross iteration dependence. And whenever we have a cross iteration dependence, the vectorizer has to do something about it. Um, because essentially when you vectorize, you, you, you will break these dependencies if you're not careful. Okay, well, I need to speed up. So uh, uh, the vectorizer can handle this by vectorizing the load, uh, and the vector load is now going to feed the next iteration, and instead of having this percent zero, we will have a shuffle vector which combines the two vector loads together, and the cast has to sync so that it feeds off of the shuffle instead of off of the fee. It was placed early on before it must be placed later. And in doing so, it has to pass over this load. So we have two decisions, one to move a cast beneath the load, and the previous decision we saw was to move a load next, to hoist it to next to another load. Now in which order do we take these decisions? If we're not careful, and I have to admit we were not careful, uh, the first load will will blow away and then the sink will not sink and uh, we had a bug and, and we went ahead and fixed it. So this is just to come to show you that if you have multiple decisions, it's best to be able to record them so that you can compose them. If you keep a bunch of maps, each one stores its decisions, uh, it's hard to reason about how the plan looks like after you've, you've taken all the decisions up until now and what decisions you can take based on what, what's, uh, what took place uh, up until now. Predication is a very, very important optimization. Uh, you must convert all divergent branches. Uh, we have no vector branch, right? A branch stays scalar, uh, and we saw how to use masking for that. Um, it's important for innermost loops. It's much more challenging for outer loop. Uh, so Zimon talked about uh, uh, RV being able to do that, uh, and we'd love to collaborate and to get the, the loop vectorizer to do it. Uh, and Hideki explained last year in, in this conference, what does it mean? Um, so essentially you have a nested loop and if you want to vectorize the outer loop, you have to massage the inner loop so that you generate this kind of loop, uh, this kind of code. So it's not only an and or a not instructions that we have now, it, more instructions need to be modeled this way. So we want to take predication decisions by transforming one vplan to another. So We'd like to record the left-hand side as a plan before predication and then apply predication to vplan, transform it to the right-hand side. And we want to combine all these decisions together uh, so that we know we sank the casts, say, earlier, and then we did predication, and then we optimize interleave groups, and everything, every decision is built on, the, on top of the previous decision in a, in a composable way. Another decision that we mentioned earlier is sync scalar operands, which essentially starts from this divide and tries to reason about the operands of this divide and say, okay, we have a branch here, uh, which means that everything under the branch is going to be conditionally executed. It might not execute. So why not move these instructions that feed the divide to share its branch? And this is what the optimization is doing, but it is traversing the diffuse graph in order to reach out and try to sync the operands. And in order to do that, we have to be able to reason about the diffuse relations among the instructions to be vectorized. So that requires a, a fine-grained modeling of the diffuse at the instruction level, okay? Uh, so we'd like to use vplan to carry out decisions, but we'd like to do more. We'd like to use vplan also to make the decision to look at the vplan and to reason about different options, uh, what options do we have, and what decisions can we, can we make, okay? So that really requires the ability to run on vplan, to run an analysis, and to figure out what optimizations we can apply, what are their relative costs, and maybe there are several candidates going forward that we should continue to evaluate, and so we would like to be able to potentially version our, uh, our current vplan and fork and uh, carry out several decisions and then filter out according to the underlying cost. Okay, so this, this would require uh, support for uh, versioning uh, vplans uh, going forward. 
Another uh, piece of, another dimension, another direction that uh, requires uh, modeling um, is the scope. So loop vectorization takes a scalar loop, a scalar loop and uh, produces this uh, version of a vectorized loop which is guarded by potentially several runtime guards uh, that bypass it if needed. Um, and the original scalar loop is, is down here and it, uh, it serves both as an leftover iterations and if all iterations in case of that we by bypass the, the vector loop. So what do we model currently in vplan? We model only the in internals of the vector loop. But there's a lot of code that takes place both in reductions, uh, epilogue here, and the runtime guards themselves uh, that should be modeled. I mean, this is code that the vectorizer is gonna generate. Uh, the idea is any such code should be modeled in vplan using the, these basic blocks, reasoning about the control flow, reasoning about the whole cost that is going to be generated. Uh, and the, the, the old scalar loop is also subject to, to optimization. We can also try to vectorize it and maybe also uh, produce a, um, a preliminary peel loop to, to optimize for alignment. So this is another dimension uh, to expand vplan's coverage. So before I conclude, um, I'd like to revisit this uh, interleave group decision we, we talked about earlier. Um, and just to, to note that we are, in this case, replacing two scalar loads by a vector-wide load, right, and a pair of shuffles. Uh, forget a, little, a bit about these shuffles, just think about two scalar loads that the loop vectorizer is able to analyze them as, as being adjacent, and we can, one is even, one is odd, and replace them by one vector load. So uh, maybe that, uh, that by itself may look familiar to, to some. Uh, so if we take, for instance, this, this function uh, and we run it through uh, LLVM, we may uh, in some uh, situation get this graph. Um, does anyone recognize what kind of graph this, this is? And you have to be quick because I don't have much time left. What graph are we seeing? Any ideas? Exactly, this is a vector version of a data dependency graph. This is a diffuse graph in which each node is a, a vector instruction uh, feeding another vector instruction. So this is actually the SLP tree. Uh, Nice work by, by Adam Nemeth uh, to provide this nice visualization. Uh, so what do, we, what do we see here? We see a, if we run this code through the SLP vectorizer, we will have potentially a total cost of negative eight. But what does this model represent? If you view this, this, uh, view this SLP tree, you will see these vector instructions. Essentially, they are the same VP instructions we're modeling in the loop vectorizer, right? We have these ingredients. So we have four loads instead of one. Okay, but they are ingredients and we're gonna model the vector instruction that will replace them if we choose to vectorize. This constant is going to be broadcasted. Uh, what about this node here? It has a red rectangle. That means that these four loads are actually not going to be vectorized. They are going to remain scalar because we switched the order of, of the Cs, okay? So these are actually going to be four separate scalar loads. So can we do better than that? Um, so we can. We can actually produce this, uh, uh, a tree that has negative 15, which is better, okay? And how do we do that? We do that by vectorizing these loads. So we can actually uh, uh, load these uh, Cs in one vector, but then we need to shuffle them, okay? And uh, Shahid Asghar Ahmad uh, worked on this and provided a patch for doing that, but in order to reason about the outcome, you have to model this shuffle instruction. This is a new vector instruction, similar to the AND that we saw earlier. It has no counterpart in, uh, in, the, in the underlying IR, and SLP models this. It models only the nodes of this graph. The defuse depend, uh, dependencies are relying on the underlying IR. So we are trying to provide a defuse graph that models both new and ingredient-based instructions, 
and models both the nodes of this graph as well as the dependencies. And with that, um, the ta major takeaways are, as you saw at the beginning, uh, the first step that records the decisions in vPlan and uses vPlan to execute the vectorized code is already in tree. There's a lot of more uh, work to be done uh, to encode not only the decisions, but, only, but also uh, carry them out using vPlan and also be able to run analysis on vPlan and make the decisions. And uh, there's a lot of work. We're grateful for all the support we've had. And if there are additional contributors who want to join, there's, there's lots of things to do. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Ayal? So I know from the beginning you mentioned the way plan doesn't improve performance. I understand that. But I w what I want to know is will it improve compile time or improve the maintainability or sleepability? I don't know. Um, does it improve compile time? Uh, we made preliminary checks that it doesn't ruin compile time. Um, uh, but, but still, it's, it's only recording one, one V plan. So uh, going forward, that's, that's a concern we need to address. Um, and the, the other question was? Uh, can you impo uh, improve the stability of the code or maintain the it, it refactors the code in such a way that it's much, but everything is, is much clearer. I mean, the, the code is, is much more modular. We started out with uh, five, 8,000 lines of code that has all this logic and we're gradually refactoring it so that everything is, is much cleaner. Have you looked at all into vectorization across function calls beyond just say math intrinsics? Have we looked at vectorizing across function calls? Uh, no, uh, not yet. So again, we're trying to um, stick with all the functionality that's currently there and model it. That includes function calls. So we have sort of recipes that take care of it, uh, but we're not doing anything that, that hasn't been done uh, previously in terms of functionality. Okay. Yeah, Mo, um, thank you for the talk. Um, I got one question. You showed the emit recipe early on. Um, how do you know whether um, that instruction should be vectorized or left scalar? Because it only says emit, right? So currently, masks are all vector. But essentially, the, the, uh, the VP instruction should have a, ty should have a type. Okay. So you can reason about what, what to generate. OK, thanks. Okay. Maybe one last question. Is there any possibility of using this as a revectorizer? So if you have got legacy 128 bit wide vector code to, to actually get it then to be promoted up to 512 vectors? Um, and so the effort of modeling is there. Um, whether we are able to do anything uh, intelligent about revectorizing except scalarizing everything down to scalars and then We've solved that problem uh, separately. Um, is a good question, but uh, essentially, I see no reason why we couldn't model vector instructions coming into the vectorizer. The ingredients are going to be vectors, um, and we can model a VP instruction that has vector and in, vector ingredients. Um. Okay, thanks, Ayala. Thank you, Arnold. Thank you.